Hello. Um, as you can see, we've got a bit of a fight for uh, screen real estate going on. So you're spared my ugly mug for today. Um, as requested, uh, I hope I get his name right. I think it was Kevin Wayne requested this in my last video to have a look at this um, JS Audio Statistics plugin, um, which is this one here that I'm wiggling about. Um, and just for a, a bit of reference, I've got up another two um, meters plugins that I use. Um, the TT Dynamics being my day-to-day -day, uh, meter that I use, and the Waves um, WLM. I don't use so often. If I'm doing something specific for a radio advert or whatever, um, then this is what I'll use to get out the right uh, loudest levels for the particular radio station. And just uh, as I will become clear later, I've got the GS volume adjustment, uh, the trim plug-in um, at the beginning of the, the chain of everything. This is the first plug-in on this Master Bus FX. It's on the Master Bus, all of this. Um, very importantly, this comes as standard set to plus 6 dB. I don't know why the adjustment so Please make sure this is set to zero um, if you're going to do this particular thing. So I'm going to save that as default now. Uh, just save it as default. So that every time I pull it up, that will be at zero. It caught me out there. So I'll pull this out of the way for the moment. And I will, our reasons for that one will become clear in a minute. And let's just talk about this plugin. Um, so I'm going to use them to, to compare to so you can maybe people that are more used to these two other two meters will understand more what's going on in, in the, the audio statistics plugin. Okay, to start with, we have two user adjustable parameters at the top. We've got the RMS window. Now I'm going to start this playing. You're not, I'm not going to bore you with any audio. It's for... Um, your information, it's Rihanna's Diamonds that I've got on here, just as a, an example track, but you won't hear any audio. Um, I'm just going to use it for the meters. So I'll just set that running so everything's in, in motion. Um, the first track, the first uh, button here, the, these two user adjustable parameters, uh, this RMS window is basically just how quickly the meter reacts to whatever's going on. So you can slow it right down, so you can see it reacts a bit slower, or speed it right up so everything's ticking away nicely. I'll just set it to the default. And then this uh, RMS uh, meter is basically just the scope. So it, you know, you can have a smaller section that it's showing. You can zoom in there, or as wide as you like. I'm going to set it to minus 48 for the simple reason that um, our that TT dynamic range plugin is from minus 48. I've just, I don't know, my OCD call it. Um, okay. Now I have to admit I, I've never used this plugin before, and. I, uh, when I opened up, I, I did take a, a kind of deep breath for a minute. Um, but in actual fact, it's really quite simple and straightforward. Uh, just there's a lot going on, but you just have to work through it. Um, there are two kind of main parameters you want to worry about, and this is your RMS total loudness down here, and this is your left and your right values, and your peaks. Um, these are represented, as you can see, your peaks are these little meters bobbing up and down with the arrows here indicating the maximum. Um, and the, the overall loudness is basically this whole graph here, which is the wider the, the color graph you've got going on, then the wider the dynamic range. And obviously this red bit is more where the dynamic range is concentrated, where most of the, the kind of energy is within the track in the frequency range. So if we work our way through this, we've basically got two sections here. We've got a left and a right. So, so we repeat ourselves um, with these, what is it now, one, two, three, four buttons here. Um, they just repeat themselves. So it's a lot, but it's actually all the same. So you've got your RMS window, which is your current value. 
which would be your equivalent of the momentary value over here on the WLM or this uh, RMS bar here on the, the TT Dynamics, this, the wider bar on the inside here. Um, so that's fairly simple. It's just showing you where you are at any kind of moment in time. Then we've got the minimum value that has been measured. Now one thing I will say is um, if I stop and then hit play again, the track resets. Now that's kind of important to know because obviously your minimum value, see you start this running at the beginning of a track with a silence, then your minimum value is going to be right way down here. Now that will become clear why that's important to know. Because your max here, obviously this is the next one, so your maximum value this is the maximum uh, RMS that's been measured. Uh, basically, can I, uh, not a peak, but the peak value of your RMS. Because this next one here is your RMS dynamic range. Um, and that is basically the difference between these two, between your minimum and maximum. So that's why I was talking about your minimum if you start at the beginning of the track, which I'll tell you what I'll do now, if I rewind it right back to the start and press play, so now you notice that your minimum value that's been measured is minus 311. So now all of a sudden you've got a dynamic range of 298. So you just need to be aware of that, that if you're going to start it, start it somewhere in your track, preferably at the loudest part, and to get you a, a decent measurement of what your actual RMS value is. Um, or your average RMS value. So that's those explained. Um, so that's what you're looking at there. So it's basically your momentary value or your RMS value here, which is your current, which is to me is the more important of them. Then moving on down, you've got your peak values. So obviously where things are peaking out at, um, fairly self-explanatory. It's the same as your, we bring up the mixer. Um, as your meters here. So you've got your peak meters in the middle here and you've got your RMS meters here as well on your master bus. Um, so they are, they're, you know, fairly self-explanatory. And then if we move on to our RMS total loudness. Now this is, um, as far as I can work out, it's the same as your dynamic range here um, on the TT meter, these two in the middle. It's the same as your short term LUFS. LUFS and RMS values are, if you think of them as the same, it does get a bit more complicated and technical and in certain applications they can be slightly different, but on the main RMS and LUFS in a simple and simplified world, which is where I like to live, are the same, okay? So these become important because, for example, if you were exporting this track to, for example, to radio, where I think in the US the, the standard now is minus 23 dB. If you, you were exporting this for radio, so you would say, for example, want a, an output of, let's just say, to minus 20 dB as your, your maximum, your RMS loudness value. So what you would do, you have this the utility plugin as your first in your chain. And a simple way of working out what you want to do here and this is you know this is the application of of the the plugin now is that up at this up on the screen is adjustment that you need to do equals the target minus the original so if you want a target of minus 20 db you've got an original value here of let's just call it 11 db so the difference between those is 9. So it's minus 9 dB. So you would take your utility and pop in minus 9. And then restart play. And as you notice here now, we're getting a, a, an RMS value now, total loudness, of minus 20 dB as our output. So now you would go ahead and render that. But one thing to bear in mind, um, switch off any metering plugins you've got going on. But um, it basically, the, the, I've found that it slows down the rendering time. 
obviously don't switch off the the, the utility plugin. But that's that's kind of it. Um, fairly straightforward plugin, really useful. I think I'm going to be using it. I don't know why I've never thought to look at it before, but I mean I like to keep it fairly simple with this guy here. It tells me everything I need to know. I'll put some links. This one is still free. I checked in on the website yesterday. Um, there isn't a 64-bit version I found, unfortunately. I think Brainworks do one, um, a paid version of this. But, I mean, I'll put a link in this to the description and uh, to this one. And also I found there's an interesting article about the, the application I've just given you about this JS utility plugin, uh, utility, sorry, the audio statistics plugin. I'll put a link in the description to that. And there's a couple of uh, useful uh, links that I'll give you as well if you want to look up and read a little bit about loudness and what it all means and all the rest of it. So I hope that was useful. Hope it was helpful. Um, I hope it was what you wanted. Um, I can't find anything more complicated about this plugin than that. Please like, subscribe, say hello, tell me if you liked it, tell me if you want anything else covering, please let me know. Um, I will be working my way through the uh, JS folder plugin. I've got some neat little tricks uh, that I would like to show you with some of them. Um, so yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys, bye.